Hi, this is Tim with Shop Tool Reviews. Today we're going to learn how to fill a hole with our MIG welder. We're going to learn how to weld up holes using our MIG welder. Now we've got our Miller Multimatic 215 which should do the trick for us and we're going to use it on some sheet metal and then later use it on a trunk of a car to actually weld up some holes. Many times when you're working on a car, restoring a car, maybe fixing some body work, you have holes in the sheet metal whether that be from the factory from that trim or whether you've actually put those holes in there pulling out those dents but they need to be filled. Rather than filling that with body filler, we're going to learn how to actually weld those up so that metal's there, we can grind it down. Because when we weld those holes up, now we've got some structure again and it's not just a void that's filled up with some plastic or body filler. The first thing we want to do is make sure our metal is prepped and clean. And so I'm going to use my sander here and actually sand this paint off, uh, sand this finish off and make sure we don't have any oil residue or anything like that. Now since I can get to both sides, I might as well sand both sides, so... And it's fine if you just want to take a wire brush to that and clean it up. In this case, I've got my, my Ingersoll Rand that does a good job of cleaning it up with that sanding disc. Uh, but now we've got it good and clean, and so we should be able to weld that up without any of that... Uh, contaminants getting in there, if you will. The first thing we want to do is make sure our gas is on, so our argon CO2 is set at about 18 pounds. For this project, we're using the Miller Multimatic 215, and I've got the metal thickness set at 14 gauge, and I've backed the wire feed speed down, because I really don't need a lot of wire to fill these holes. Now, one of the tricks to doing this is not trying to just weld up the sides of those holes and fill that in, but using a welding spoon or a brass spoon, and basically what you've got is a non-sticking surface when you're welding to this. Uh, and so this is a great tool to get. 10, 20 bucks, you can buy these about everywhere, anywhere you've got welding supplies sold. Uh, so pick one up, very easy to use. And by the way, once you get a lot of arcs on it or anything, same way, you can clean this up just like you clean up your metal when you're preparing a weld. So we've got our welding spoon, we've got our welder fired up, and now we're ready to go. I've previously drilled an eighth inch hole, a quarter inch hole, and a five sixteenths inch hole. These are common sizes you would see on a car. Uh, that five sixteenths is probably on the bigger side. You might see a three eighths, but again, pretty common sizes when you're either welding up uh, rivet holes or places you've connected uh, pullers or things like that. Trim my stick out. And then basically all we want to do is hold our welding spoon back here and fill the weld. And the bigger holes, you really don't do anything different except you may want to work the sides of those welds first. So you see my spoon stuck to my weld, but you can see it's very easy. It just pops right off and you've got some arcing there on that spoon, but it really didn't stick to it. And you can see those holes are nice and filled up. Now we can grind those down and we don't have to fill that with body filler. And you can even see the back sides of our welds. We got good penetration there. So now those holes are filled up and we've got some structure there as well. So we see it works here with a piece of sheet metal laying on a table, but let's try it out on an actual scenario where we usually see this. So we're gonna try it here on our project vehicle, which is a 71 Olds 442. Now we put a cutlass trunk on it because it's the same shape. However, there's holes across the bottom of the trunk where cutlass trim goes, but 442 trim does not. This is a common scenario when doing restorations, car rebuilds, things like that. So we need to weld those holes up so we don't have to fill it with filler. So let's give it a try. On a hole this size, this is actually a little larger than 3 8 I may come in and weld up about half of it, hit it with some air, maybe do another one, and then come back to it and finish that because I don't want to overheat this sheet metal and have it warp on me. I don't think we want that stick out. Again, going to use my welding spoon, put it back here. Thank you. 
You can see now after quickly taking our DeWalt grinder to clean those welds up, there's a few pinholes to fill with some filler, but there's no voids behind it. So there's no moisture that's going to wick in from the backside to create corrosion or anything like that. So we filled those holes. We've filled holes in some sheet metal sitting here on the desktop, uh, which looks really good, really flat. That'd be a really quick cleanup with probably zero voids. It's not hard to do, especially with a quick welding spoon. Again, $10, $20 item, uh, and you can use it over and over and over. Just on your larger holes, like on the trunk lid, you do have to kind of work into that and figure out what works best for you. I did have a little trouble getting those started, but once you get them started, you know, cool them off, come back to them, do some more, and I just kind of worked down the trunk and came back to the ones, and it worked out just fine. Any MIG welder is going to work for you. In our case, we're using the Miller Multimatic, so I was able to dial in the thickness of metal, uh, whether it be by gauge or by you know fractions of an inch, as well as I was able to fine tune my wire feed speed and the voltage output that I wanted when I was filling in those holes. But make sure whatever you do, you stay safe and wearing a welding helmet protecting those eyes. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and have a great day.